Hey, hey, come on in. I'm just going to take a minute or two just to let everyone in. Yeah. Those of you that have been here, you know the routine. It takes me just a couple minutes. Get a piece of paper, something to drink, some oils to put on. Welcome, welcome. Happy March 1st. Ah, the hope of spring, right? Can you feel it? The birds are chirping. Have you guys seen a robin yet? I've seen a bunch of robins in my yard. Some bluebirds. I could get all excited about it. In the, oh, there's a Samsung. If you have someone that's um, a friend joining tonight and they can't get in, um, I normally don't let people in that I don't recognize or if it's um, from a device name or a phone name, just because of safety purposes, because Zoom can be kind of crazy like that. Welcome, welcome. Making my PowerPoint for tonight, I was like getting super excited. I sometimes jump the gun with the gardening. Well, we already did this year. We planted onions way too early. <laughs> So if you are joining, um, let us know what in the comment section, what you are super excited to start growing this year. Is it something new or is it just one of your favorite crops? Like what are you excited for in this gardening season? I'm gonna put some oils on so I have focus tonight. I'm putting on Clarity. That's, that's my favorite focus oil. Hey, Sarah Paul, I just, um, I just said if there's a Samsung phone. Okay, so if you have someone that's trying to join yep. and they're on Samsung, just um, let me know, or I made you co-host. I have it taken care of, no worries whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys are all saying. Hey, Karen, this is your first vegetable garden. Yeah, let us know if this is like your first vegetable garden, if this is the first time you are gonna be gardening or um, growing more produce than normal. I know there are a lot of newbies um, and that is so, so awesome. I always say grow gardens, not lawns right grow yourself some food Angela said my first garden too oh it is such I don't know every like every morning I always have my coffee and I just walk around my garden and I just pull some weeds like weeding doesn't have to be um drudgery if you get up in the morning just have your cup of coffee you do your little walk in your bare feet you're getting some grounding in and you're just enjoying your garden and just pull a few weeds every morning and it doesn't take that long so janine is planting herbs yay for the first time last um last year we expanded our herb garden and it was so fun my girls loved drying herbs and we had so many herbs for tea they love to make tea in the winter time so that was super fun Way Angelica, Angela, I put, uh, yeah, Angela, I put that on too. I, and I prayed, let no weapon formed against me prosper because sometimes Zoom can be like that. Yay, Carrie. Um, first time in your new home. Oh, it's so exciting. Tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers. You would love to learn about herbs. I'm hoping to do an herb class in April. Um, there's a sweet little place. If you're local, write this down. Um, King's Herb Nook in Honeybrook, Sarah, we, yeah, she knows that place. You introduced me to that, that place. Oh, it's the sweetest spot. And in the spring, they have medicinal herbs. It's like the only place around here, unless you have a new, another place in Lancaster County, but it's like the only place in Lancaster County, you can find weird, different medicinal herbs other than like you know, peppermint, lavender, your, your common herbs. It, I mean, it's incredible. Um, and it's the cutest little herb nook where you can go in the store and buy like all kinds of dried herbs. I mean, it smells incredible too, so. And they're a wealth of knowledge. 
and they have, if you love books, any of you love books, <laughs> I'm like all the gardening books right now, all the gardening books, the bee books, the chicken books, the everything books, they have the best book nook that you can go in there and you can just, oh my goodness, I don't know. I limit myself to one book per visit because it's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so many great things and little resources with gardening, with herbs, with all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh man, it's a treasure. And my kids just said, cause we got some organic, um, like a big bulk thing of ranch dressing. We love ranch dressing with pizza and stuff and all kinds of things. And they're like, mom, like we have like a tablespoon left. Mom, we have to go to King's Herb Nook um, <laughs> to restock on our <laughs> bulk ranch dressing. So we'll be making, um, yeah, a visit down there. So some of you were saying, yes, first time gardening. Um, some of you were saying, but uh, Kate, you said your first serious garden. Okay. So I love all the different, um, you know, learning points, like where you're coming from. And so tonight we're going to dive into some organic gardening practices. Um, and I, my husband and I have been homesteading for, we're married almost, will be 14 years in October. So I'm going to say 13 years. And so we dove right into this. Um, my husband is from Lancaster County. His grandfather was an organic gardener back in like the seventies, which is different. He worked on a, Rick always tells me this story. He worked on a um, commercial farm and came home and just from all the sprays felt horrible. And he's like, he was like, this isn't the way to farm. And um, he ventured into organic farming. And so Brooke, I have pictures of him on a little, on like, on, not a little tractor, but a big tractor at like the age of five. And he tells me stories of how he would help his grandfather. So a lot of the, the things that I have learned, I've learned from my husband. So we do this together. And I was like, hey, do you want to teach this with me? But he is totally not um, one to be behind the camera. So um, we are not experts. And these are the things that we have learned over the course of just doing this. Life lessons, learning, trial and error, um, reading. And we take our winters to dive into books, into podcasts, um, and then we get crazy ideas and we try them, you know? Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And so I want to encourage you that we are so used to and being, uh, we're so programmed into just thinking that um, doing things one way and expecting um, the same result, right? Like you put a code in the computer and you always get the same result, right? Whereas farming, gardening is not um, the same way. It's a lifestyle. It's not a thing. It's a lifestyle. And Joel Salatin, who is like a very famous farmer, um, in Virginia, he talks a lot about that, that it's just, you do it like, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, if you see something going wrong in your garden, you have to kind of maybe do some research and amend the soil. You have to, um, research and find out what's happening. Why are your leaves on your tomato plants turning yellow? Um, and so every season is different too. Every growing season is different. Um, and so, no gardener is an expert. We're all, this is all trial and error. This is all learning. This is, you know, gleaning from other gardeners and, and learning from what we've done in the past that works and refining our skills. So I'm going to share my screen. And Sarah, if you would um, just allow any other folks in. Sarah is, um, we taught this last March and Sarah and I teach Monday night calls and everyone is welcome. They're always on health and wellness um, and gardening is, it falls in that category, right? And um, you got your greenhouse today, didn't you? I did, I did. I think Natasha's on here. I'm gonna give her family a plug. Um, yeah. So Natasha Gregario, I think, I believe she's on here. Yeah. Anyway, okay, I can't, I'm like, I can't see, but um, she and her family own a company that is local and it is called Sunset Barns. And they make the most gorgeous greenhouses and horse barns and chicken coops. And oh my gosh, so many more things that I don't even know necessarily what they are because I'm very new to homesteading. Um, but we just 
got our greenhouse today delivered and it is gorgeous. Like I cannot just wait to just go in there and I don't know, and just sit in there for hours and hours and plant. And so we're so pumped about it. And we're going to be getting our chicken coop in the next month or so as well. But you have to check out their website. I'll put it in the chat as well, because the photos just make you dream huge, like very big dreams. And we are, we are so pumped. Um, so prior to this year, I was living in very suburban area. And we were doing mostly like potted plants. Um, and very small raised bed gardening as well. So if you have questions specifically about those things, you can feel free to message me um, tonight or you can message me on Facebook as well because I feel like I got to know how to do that fairly well after um, learning when the first year every single thing that we planted got eaten. So you may need a fence, even if you're in suburbia, I'm just gonna tell you that now. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and every year I learned something a little bit more. And now this year we're going, we're going big. So super excited about that, but I had to give them a plug. I'm gonna put their website in the comments as well um, because they do incredible work. Like it is just dreamy greenhouses and dreamy chicken coops and barns and things like that too. So there you go. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Yes. And so, yeah, Sarah started, like you did small scale and I'm going to bring up if you, if you're like, okay, greenhouse is out of the picture right now. Um, we, you can make shift a greenhouse and we'll talk about that. Um, and maybe I'll have you share that Sarah, cause you, when we get to that point, because you did something really cool. Um, and so all this stuff can be scaled down or scaled up. And so, um, if you're like, how do, if, if maybe I don't address the scaled down version, cause I feel like we do things big, um, if, if there's a question about how to scale down something, just comment in the um, comment section and we will get to that. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen real quick and then we will get started. Can you all see that? Perfect, okay. Okay. Hey, welcome to Organic Gardening Method. So, <laughs> Uh, let's first talk about laying the foundation. Um, we do something called like a no dig method because where we lived prior to our, um, our little farm now, we had beautiful soil and we would till it and um, just kind of lay rows of grass clippings in between, you know, as, a, as like a walkway. And then we could, we, all we had to do was just weed a little bit and it was beautiful. We moved here and the soil, we had our horses on the garden where we, that we have now and everything just got really compacted. But I think even so like the soil just wasn't, it was so depleted um, because the farmer or the person that owned our home prior to this, they actually rented out um, the back part of our property to the neighboring farmer and planted corn. So it was just stripped, it was robbed of minerals, it was so depleted and so rock hard. And so we just had a really hard time growing anything. And we had learned about wood chip gardening from um, my brother-in-law's mother-in-law there in upstate New York. And I was like, there is no way you can plant in wood chips. That's ridiculous. Um, they showed us a clip and I have it listed here. You can write it down. Um, Back to Eden Gardening by, I can never say his last name, right? Paul Gauchi. Um, it's on YouTube and you can look it up. It's like an hour and 23 minutes, but we watched that over and over again. And we were just amazed at how you could actually create a beautiful garden with wood chips. And what he did, he explained it that um, when you walk into a forest, when you, when you walk in, the soil is like, it's like a cushion, right? Think about when you take a hike in the woods, it's like cushiony. You dig down in and it's just this soft, fertile soil. It's like almost black underneath when you dig underneath because everything is falling and it composts naturally. And so he calls it back to Eden gardening because it's like being in the garden of Eden where everything regenerates. And that's what we want. We want to regenerate um, 
and have regenerative farming practices. So what wood chips do, and when you can create, this is what I'm saying, laying the foundation. When you can create um, beautiful soil, it is going to set you up for success. And so wood chips will actually, um, we get wood chips delivered, um, we pay for them. It's just something we've always done. You can look to see sometimes communities have a drop place where you can go and, and load up a pickup truck and you know bring back wood chips that people drop there. Um, you can go to getchipdrop.com. We tried it. We haven't got it. We haven't gotten a free drop yet. I guess maybe it all depends on your location, but you can get wood chips delivered for free if you go to getchip. Uh, get. I have it listed here. It's like that's a <laughs> tongue twister. Getchipdrop.com. And Sarah, you you did that as well. I don't. Did you get anything yet? No. Um, yeah, not yet, but I just did it recently. I had done it at my other, you know, where we lived before too. We didn't get anything, but again, I think that was more like location oriented. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah, so I, I just urge you to go ahead and watch that. If you have a large space to do wood chip gardening or not even a large space. I mean, even if you have a small garden, this is something that you can do because it amends the soil. And so when you can get wood chips and then preferably you want them to start breaking down um, before you add them to the garden, okay? Because once they start breaking down, there's microbes in there. They start eating away the wood chips, breaking them down. And they're actually going to create more soil as they break down. Um, and so we usually get them in the winter months. I would say maybe January we get a drop and then they start to decompose and we move them up to the garden in about like late March. As soon as the soil starts to thaw um, and we can get some chips up there, we start to make rows. Um, and we just lay them in rows instead of like just dumping them all on our garden. What we found successful in a large area is making rows of wood chips. And then we mow between the rows because that keeps weeds down. So wood chips will also keep weeds down. It keeps moisture in. It has been phenomenal for our gardening success. Now, if you have a smaller area you can do something that's new. If maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but it's called lasagna gardening. It's a little bit more intense. That's why I say it's great for smaller areas or even raised beds. Um, or if you have like box gardens that are kind of on top of your, like the soil, you're layering like a lasagna. So it could be the grass and then you put like pizza boxes Tell your family to save you pizza boxes. There's actually a place in New Jersey that does pizza box drops, a farm that does pizza box drops. And um, people just drop off their pizza boxes and they put them all on their farm. And um, that's like the first layer just to keep weeds out, right? And then, um, let me see if I can move my screen here. And then it's just all kinds of like layers of compost, mushroom soil, manure, um, leaf mulch, wood ash. So it's just all these layers. Sometimes it's straw. I'm gonna click to the next one because here's one that if you are in a smaller space, lasagna gardening is good for those small spaces. Um, raised beds or like container gardening, like not little tiny containers, but like those larger um, um, spaces, those larger container gardenings. And so this one is branches, like rough mulch. And when I say wood chips, you want to get undyed, you know, freshly chipped wood from an arborist. You know, you see asplund around those big orange trucks. Think about any other, um, you know, arborists that are in your area that are trimming trees that are going, you know, onto people's property and wood, like just chipping, right? Sometimes you have to pay for it. I'll tell you, I pay $75 for a big truckload of wood chips. And that will last us, normally we get two drops um, and that'll be good for our season. You know, we, we replenish every season. We always add more because they're decomposing and so they're creating soil. So by the end of the season, we have pretty much just a tiny bit of wood chips and the rest is soil, but it's so soft and fertile. Um, 
And so this is grass clippings, newspaper, cardboard, compost. If you like have a little compost bin from all your, your kitchen slop, um, from your, you know, from your whatever you eat, and then straw on the top. So every lasagna gardening is garden is a little bit different, but what that does is it adds to the soil and you're adding nutrients. And this is key for organic gardening. Any questions so far, Sarah? Yes. Um, so there, Natasha shared some very interesting, you know, great information that was some nurseries and tree companies will have last year's chips. So they're partially broken down. So you can ask them about that specifically. Um, and Katie said that she's been saving cardboard boxes for almost a year for her garden. So she is like so prepared, which is amazing. And then Jennifer asked, are you worried about termites? My dad asked With that. the wood chips. Yeah, maybe with the wood chips. Yeah, my dad always asks that as well. And no, I'm not. I feel like our garden is far away, far enough away from our home. But then again, I use, I don't know, we use wood chips for everything. I mean, I even use them in the chicken coop when we do like a deep bedding um, composting in there. We haven't had an issue. So I'm, no, I'm not concerned about it. No, <laughs> I, so far. So just from experience, this has been our sixth year doing this and we haven't had an issue. Yeah, good question though. Okay, so um, plant health starts with soil health. And I want you to think about your own body. Your body health is, um, it's imperative to have soil health, so your gut health for whole body health. If you want healthy plants, your soil has to be healthy. Take that in. Your soil has to be healthy. You can get your soil tested. We have never done that, but I know my dad has done it. Um, but you can go to your local ag extensions. Like we have uh, the Penn State Ag Resources and you can go and you can get your soil tested. Um, it might cost, I don't know what it costs these days. It used to be free, but now you have to pay for it. Um, so you can get it tested and it'll tell you what your soil is lacking and what it's rich on. And then that way you know how to amend your soil. Just like if you were to get a mineral um, test for your own body or um, you know, hormone test for your body, it's the same thing. You're getting it done for your soil. Um, but here are some things that we have found that have helped us along with the wood chips um, is magnesium from Epsom salt water. And so we find that that's really helpful um, on tomatoes when we spray our tomatoes down and like spray around the root, just mixing up some Epsom salts water and um, spraying our tomato plants, usually like once a week will help. Um, not every plant likes magnesium, but um, tomatoes definitely like that. Calcium from crushed eggshells. So we save our eggshells in the summertime. We just kind of crush them up and, you know, sprinkle them around. I don't have a rhyme or reason to this. I just you know, when we have a bunch saved, I'll just sprinkle them around the plants, the root of the, you know, the root of the plant. Um, rock salt. Brooke did tell me to tell you guys this. This is one thing that we found last season when we were doing some research. But if you go to the hardware store and you just ask, oh my word, I remember going to the local hardware store and I had like five guys trying to figure out what I was asking. I was like, I just need a big bag of rock salt mined in the U.S. and it like came out in a big Cargill bag that once they figured it out like the same thing you would put on your driveway to melt snow but here's the thing um Brooke said make sure it is pure rock salt because they are adding things to salt they're bioengineering it so make sure it's pure rock salt like something you would get and you can tell them this like the same thing you would use, hang on, my dog's scratching at the door. Normally it's the kids scratching at the door. It's my dog. So if you have an old, um, old ice cream maker, same thing you would pack the ice cream maker with, right? 
but this just adds a mineral complex and you only have to do this once a year and you just kind of throw it on or if you get one of those um, handheld, you know, um, cedars, you know, normally you can just throw it on if you have a small space, but it's about 75 pounds per acre. So if you have a very small space, that's going to be a good math problem. <laughs> um, just sprinkle it on. That's going to give a mineral complex. So just like we add, we use real sea salt on in our cooking, or we add it to some water. It adds valuable minerals back to the soil. Um, dried manure, dried. Make sure it's dried. If it is fresh manure, you are going to kill your plants. So a, up to a year, I would say a year dried manure. And you can find this from farmers. Um, my dad always comes over in the springtime and gets dried horse manure from us, um, cow manure. Rabbit is really good just because it's smaller and it dries out faster. Um, they call this stuff liquid gold <laughs> um, and chicken manure. So when we clean out our chicken coop in the spring, we'll put it on a big pile, we'll let it dry out and then we can just sprinkle it on our garden um, before we add some wood chips or on top of the wood chips as needed, but um, always just make sure it's dried. So search your area. Search out farmers in your area or local homesteaders that might have extra. If you need horse manure, you can come get some from me if you're local. Um, borax, now this is something that's uncommon, right? But think about the things that you can get um, minerals from like on the periodic table, boron. So not necessarily do you need boron in your soil. This is something we don't add, but this is where if you get a soil test, you'll know what you're lacking, what you have to amend the soil with, okay? Um, compost. Compost is like your bacteria. It's like your probiotic that you would take normally. So if you're doing wood chip gardening, you definitely do have to do some composting too, just to add those probiotics because those um, that bacteria will eat um, it'll start to decay. It's going to start to decay the wood chip um, and, and break things down. So we have compost, um, you know, it's just things we throw in a pile. Normally it's things that we throw to the chicken and they will scratch at it, eat it, poop it out. And that's like our compost. So it's composted food and manure and the things that, you know, we eat, they eat, that kind of thing. If you want more research on this, if you're like, if you're not brand, brand new, or maybe you are brand new, but you love all the sciencey stuff, um, Brooke said, go to bionutrient.org. There are articles and articles and videos on how to amend your soil. So if you like doing that research, we still have the whole month of March to do a little more research, right? Um, on amending the soil. I just wanted to really highlight that because this year was the first year, here's a cabbage that we grew. And this was the first year that we did not have to use any chemicals on our cruciferous vegetables. So when I say we organic garden, we mostly organic garden, but there are times when we do have to pull out the, the seven, which is like a dust that you dust some of your plants with one time. There are times we have to do that or we don't get cabbage. So, this is the first year we did not have to do anything like that because the soil was so healthy that it deterred the bugs and the plants could grow and prosper, okay? So think about that. The soil is also deterring insects from coming in, right? It's like crazy science stuff. I don't know, it blows my mind. <laughs> Go ahead, we Sarah. have some questions, Sarah, yeah. about amending the soil. Um, so, do you amend before wood chips or after? Okay, great question. So in the fall, this isn't necessary, but this is something that we do in the fall. So when we have all of our harvest up or most of it, um, we, will, we will throw rye seed or wheat seed all over the garden. What that does is it's going to grow before the frost and it's gonna grow and grow and that's gonna add nutrients. It's gonna add uh, minerals and you know amend the soil over the winter time. And also then in the spring, since that grows up, it's gonna crowd out any weeds and then we mow it down or you can um, just kind of 
flatten it out with just, I don't know, pushing something over it or just driving over it. And then you can lay your wood chips down. Or you can do some dried manure over top. Um, we have a wood stove. So we have some places like we'll just kind of sprinkle throughout the winter. We'll sprinkle the wood ash all over the garden. So we do that throughout the winter. So we have either wheat or rye growing throughout the winter. Uh, make sure you do it before your last frost. So that way it can germinate and start growing. Um, and then throughout winter, like I said, we just kind of throw the wood ash. Um, and if you can find wood ash um, from, you know, someone that maybe that you know that has an outdoor wood furnace. Um, and you can sprinkle it. If they don't need it, you can put it on. But yeah, we do it. Um, we amend the soil before, during, and after, I guess you could say. So during is when we put the magnesium on or the, um, the eggshells. After is when we plant the wheat seed um, and the ash, right? So it's a constant thing. Awesome, thank you for that. Yep, any other questions? Yes, um, and when do you add the salt? Do you add that in the springtime, the Epsom salt? Um, the Epsom salt, so the rock salt is one time a year. So you can throw that on in the spring. Oh, sorry, rock salt. Yep, rock salt. Um, Cause the magnesium, the Epsom salt is usually during, like I'll just spray that on the tomatoes once a week. Yeah, so rock salt is once a year. So you can throw that on in early spring before you plant. Sound good? Yeah, absolutely. And what about adding lime to the soil? So that if you're doing wood chips, you shouldn't have to add lime. So we don't add lime to ours. Okay. Yeah. And then when you did the chip drop request, did you know that if you pay the $20 to offset the cost, it says that you can get a faster drop? Oh, I didn't. I didn't pay the either. <laughs> Thank you. you know what? I, I, I took a chance on that. For me, I'm like, you know what? I like to know that I'm going to get it. I like to yeah. know that I'm going to have it. So I just pay, I just pay the $75. Yeah. It used to be 50. They increased the price. I don't, I don't know. And then you know what? I chased down Asplund, those big orange trucks one spring. I saw them, they were working. They always work here on 501, just trimming trees. And I was like, I, I went up and talked to them. And, like, and they're like, yeah, 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 we'll drop it. And like, they never did. And then I was all in the company and I got transferred all over. It took me like half a day to finally get them to deliver for free. And I was like, this is not worth my time and energy. I'm just gonna pay for wood chips. I know they're coming. I know the company I get them from, done, right? But I just thought wood chip, let's just see if it works. So it's up to you. If you have the time and energy to call around and, and try to get them for free, or if you have a truck that you can go get them from like your community dump site, go for it. Um, that's, that's always like a, a, you know, how you feel about it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's all for now. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about choosing seeds. Cause this is always a question that I get. Um, you know, there's so many different seed companies now, and there's so many different labels, just like we have all the different food labels and all the different labels on our hair care products and makeup, right? Um, what do you look for in a seed? So when we choose seeds, we try our best to go with organic. Do we always go with organic? Not necessarily, but we always go with an heirloom and a non-GMO. So that means it's not genetically modified um, and it's an heirloom seed that has been um, cultivated from you know, generation, generation, generation. Nothing has been altered. We never choose a hybrid. We used to at the beginning until I learned like, well, that's like, that's altering the seed, right? So we never choose an hybrid. That's always up to you. I know, you know, I know homesteaders and those that advocate for growing all their own food that still choose hybrid because they get a better harvest. That's up to you. Um, this is just what we choose. So some of the companies that we like, what I have in the picture here, they always get me with their artwork, but we just tried them last year and I really like a lot of their products. Southern Exposure Seed Exchange, they have beautiful artwork on their seed packets. 
I don't know, it doesn't make their seeds any different, but to me, it's like, ah, that's like my heart skips a beat when I see their seed packet. Um, Baker Creek, they're a very popular um, seed company. You can find some really exotic things to grow. High mowing seeds, Sarah, you just did your, um, co-opted a fundraiser with high mowing seeds. So they're a good brand as well. Seed Saver Exchange. Um, and then Bucktown Seed Company is a brand new seed company that started um, and they are local. They're in the Philadelphia area. So if you wanna support a local um, up and coming seed company, Bucktown Seed, check them out. Um, I'm excited to try their seeds this season. And then if you're local to Lancaster County, Roars Seeds, if you wanna type that in Sarah, um, I didn't put that here, but Roars Seeds in Smoketown is like a candy store for grownups. And even my kids are like, oh, can we get this? Can we get these flowers? I mean, they have everything for gardeners, organic and non-organic. And they carry a lot of these um, seed companies as well. So they have their own seed supply, their own brand, and then they carry a lot of these other um, companies as well. They have trays, they have the tools, they have baskets, everything, okay? Um, and then starting your seeds. Choose organic soil, read the label first. I got some from Costco. It was like a organic seed. It was like a popular name. What's the, oh my gosh. Tell me the name of like the most popular soil. I'm, I'm seeing the bag right now. Anyway. It was, miracle Grow. It was like a miracle Grow. yeah. Um, maybe not miracle Grow, but it was a popular um, soil company and it was organic. And I opened it up and I was like, whoo, this stuff reeks like, like poop, <laughs> like it was just in trash. And I read the label and it said recycled from landfill material. I'm going, that's not organic. That's gross. So read the label first. Just because it says organic doesn't mean that it's always like from a reliable source, okay? So choose an organic soil if, I mean, not always needed, but choose an organic soil or a good soil to start your seeds in. Know your zone in your last frost date. So here in PA, we're zone 6B or this part of Pennsylvania. Um, and so normally we can plant after Mother's Day. Mother's Day weekend is usually the given. Now last year we had snow on Mother's Day weekend. Remember that? And we didn't plant, we weren't planning, so it was later. Um, and so normally we can start our seeds at the end of March, right? End of March, and then that'll give you a good seven weeks, seven to eight weeks to start your seeds indoors. Sarah, will you take the lead and talk, do you have, do you, you're good? And tell us how you made a mini greenhouse out of a clear plastic tote. Yeah, and that was last year. So. Last year, what I did, I took a plastic Rubbermaid container, like a storage tote, large one, and it was all clear. So one that had a clear storage part. Um, I believe the lid was clear, but that really doesn't matter what color. And what I did is I took all my trays and I put them in the bottom. So I put them like if this is the flat lid, I put all my trays on top of the lid and I put the large storage part on top and I put them out of my deck. Um, and I would just add water to the bottom of the lid so that the trays would just soak up the water. And then water would also um, come onto the top of them throughout the day as well, which was just absolutely fantastic. I rarely had to water them at all. And it worked like a little mini greenhouse. So it was super cheap <laughs> because I just literally used a plastic tote that I had. I cleaned out like some baby clothes that were in it. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to repurpose you. And it worked incredibly, incredibly well. So you can take a look at Pinterest for ideas like that too. But that was the most basic, simple idea that I had. Um, and then here I am this year with a greenhouse, you know, so it's, it was just such a cool comparison, but it worked very, very well for our garden. Yay, that's so cool. I love that idea. Um, and you can also make um, what we call cold frames. Um, my girls are making them right now in co-op. Um, search Pinterest for those. It's, um, it's just, you know, using plywood 
and putting like a glass window on top. Actually, I think their um, teacher has them making like a, like she's using plastic, but they're making like a frame to put on top and it's just plastic. So you can do that for outside as well. Um, you can just put that outside and put your, I would say your cold weather seeds. Um, I know next week's supposed to be in the sixties. Like, so my greenhouse has been getting to on warm days in the sun has been getting to 70, almost up to 90 on like 50 degree days. So your like your plastic tote, your cold frames, they'll get pretty warm during the day. You may have to bring those seed trays back inside at nighttime or that tote back inside at nighttime and then put them back out during the day because the nighttime will get cold. Um, but like cold weather plants like broccoli, um, radishes, cauliflower, kale, those things you can probably start now and onion sets like those, you can get little bags of onion bulbs and you can maybe start planting those, uh, especially if, if you have a cold frame in, directly in the soil. Um, we had that at our old house and it was just kind of on top of the soil and we started some early plants in there, like some spring onions. You can start those now um, and your broccoli seeds, you can start them in trays because those can go into the ground a little bit before, um, you know, May. If you want to cover them with some plastic at nighttime, um, if it gets too cold. But um, I mean, yeah, do some research on your zone and what things you can start planting now, like seeds that you can start sowing now. But a lot of things we start, we start directly in the ground in May, like zucchini, um, cucumbers. Um, we do some things that are directly sown in the ground. So you have to do some research on, on those kinds of things and how you want to start. And that I think could be a whole nother class in which May, March 27th, my husband and I are having a community seed sowing day and we'll teach you all those things. If you are local, come out. It's a by donation class. So it's free to sign up. Just kind of, you know, donate if you feel obliged to do that for the soil you're you, you'll use. We'll have trays, soil for you and education. So um, I'll post that at the end. Okay, so any questions on that, Sarah? So um, just a couple comments that milk jugs, milk jugs can do the same concept that we were just talking about, that you can use those. I know that I also reused little berry containers for, you know, to use as starting trays too, that they work really well as little mini greenhouses. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, Natasha believes that if it says heirloom, then it automatically is non-GMO and organic. So it might make it a little bit easier to follow. Non-GMO and organic labeling costs lots of money. So some, some companies also don't do that, but they can also say that it is heirloom. So that's just what we were talking about, but that's it. Good to know, good to know. Yeah, I, and Natasha, I don't always buy organic. Like you said, um, my husband has a hang up because Baker Creek, like some of those big companies, they pay for like, it's a lot of advertising. So their prices on their seed packets go up. And especially when you wanna do a big pack of those seeds, it could cost a lot of money if you're doing more than just a tiny pack. Um, and so that's good to know because normally we just go with heirloom if, um, you know, that's more of in our price range, right? So let's talk about um, keeping pests and weeds away. So obviously soil health, we talked about that. Um, companion planting, we don't necessarily do a lot of companion planting. Um, it's just, yeah, we just haven't, but if you have, tell us what your success has been. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that when we talk about essential oils um, and Diatomaceous earth is something that we use. Let me just get my dog in here. She's being annoying. I'm sorry. I know that when I was doing raised bed gardening, I did a lot of companion planting and it worked extremely, extremely well. Um, so you can take a look at different resources for that too. You can even look up little uh, maps that kind of show you what plants go well together, but in confined spaces like raised beds, companion planting can be a game changer. Like I know that this past year we did, we did it in all of our beds 
and it made such a difference in our yield. It made a difference in the way that um, with protection from pests and things like that too, it was just really great to do. So if you do raised beds, small raised beds, I really recommend giving it a shot. Awesome. Sorry, I have an old dog and she's just, she's high maintenance. If you have an old dog, <laughs> you might know. <laughs> so thanks for your patience and thanks for joining in there. Yeah, Sarah, I, we just haven't because we have so much space and it just never works out that we can do companion planting. Um, so if you have, yeah, smaller space and you can, um, and you can make it work because it is kind of like a puzzle that you have to work together. And so it's, if you have that mindset of, of, of matching plants together, it's perfect. Um, diatomaceous earth is something that we used for pest control. So instead of getting out the seven and, sprink and, and sprinkling that on plants, first we try the essential oils, then we try the diatomaceous earth, or we try both. Um, and diatomaceous earth, you can get at Tractor Supply, you can get at your local health food store. It is so, so cheap. You can even use it internally for yourself to help with um, parasites. And so that's what it does. It helps with bugs that are eating your plants because they eat the, the diatomaceous earth and it like it just kills them, right? It kills that that little parasite that is on that plant, that bug that is eating the plant. Um, and so with diatomaceous earth and anything that is natural, you have to constantly be putting it on. So I would say every day be putting it on um, on your plant. And you can get um, they're called dusters, and it's like this machine. You put the the powder into the top and you just crank it, and it blows the dust onto your plant. Um, I call it a duster. That's just what we've always called it. So um, you can check local, um, uh, you know, Agway, Tractor Supply, they'll probably carry that. A weed torch, and look this up, it's what it's called, weed torch. I just looked it up. You can find them at Home Depot, Lowe's, and it goes on a propane tank or a small torch, and you can actually torch weeds. And so we have an asparagus patch that um, in the springtime before the asparagus pops up, um, we, uh, not we, I'm sorry, Brooke, because I'm deathly afraid of fire um, and propane tanks. Well, not really, but it just freaks me out. He will just like put that thing on the propane tank and he will go down and torch all the weeds on the asparagus patch. Then we'll put some fresh wood chips on, some dried manure, and we still have to pull some weeds here and there, but it kills the weed seed that's in the ground. So you can do this um, early spring um, or, you know, you know, around your plants, definitely not on your plants. I do it early spring or he does it early spring just to kill the weed seed. Okay. And then essential oils. And that's what we're going to dive into um, just in this later half of the, the class. Um, you can use essential oils. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. Before we go there. Um, Natasha had also mentioned about companion insects, bats, birds, ladybugs, praying mantises um, that can eat thousands of pests and insects in a day. I think that's really interesting. I don't have any experience with that personally, but, um, and she also recommended neem oil, which I have used as well. And she again said to make sure that it's pure you know, just like anything else, like you had said, Sarah, too, to make sure that you read the ingredients and that other chemicals aren't just put in with something that's natural too. Yeah, but probably a hexane-free neem oil because a lot of uh, fatty oils, even essential oils, they use solvents. Um, one of them that's a big one is hexane. And so that's a chemical that they use to just extract the oil faster, whether it's um, a fatty oil or an essential oil. And we don't want that on our plants. If you're trying to go organic, especially if you, you know, if you have children and um, pets, you don't want those chemicals around them. So that's a good point. We have a lot of praying mantises. I mean, you can, you can, even, I think you can even buy ladybugs. You can buy worms for your garden too for composting. Um, so yes, that's a great um, thing. You can put up bat houses to attract bats if you want to for insects. Um, bird boxes. We have lots of bird boxes around our garden that the girls have made um, to help with insect control as well. So good point, very good point. And then so lastly, um, you can make your own garden sprays. And like I said, with anything like diatomaceous earth, anything natural, you just wanna do it and use it consistently. 
because these things are more natural and they will wear off, right? They're not like a chemical residual that will just like last on the plant. So you can wither unwanted um, weeds. Cinnamon bark oil is awesome. So you can just put that, make sure you don't get these on your plant, but just on the weeds. And if you fill out the survey that I have at the end, I will send you a whole journal with all of these recipes on, or you can just screenshot this right now, but um, it might be easier with that journal because it's gonna be a beautiful journal filled with um, pages that you can write your notes in, garden notes, and then it'll have lots of recipes, okay? And so this plant love spray, this is for outdoor plants and indoor plants as well, that you can spray on your plants just to help them be more vibrant and um, grow bigger and um, repel insects as well. It has that centronella in it. Pets and large animals like deer get a fence, <laughs> right? Um, but sometimes fences don't work, right? So there are ways that you can get rid of or deter your pets, deter um, large animals like squirrel and deer. Well, squirrel aren't big, but those annoying um, animals that could wreak havoc on your garden. Um, so here you're just um, putting your oils in a pan of water and then strips of old clothing and kind of putting them around um, your garden on stakes, maybe even on your plants or around your plants um, on little stakes. And the, the smell of that will keep away um, any, any um, pets or pests, pesty wild animals that you might have coming around. Pollinator party, if you wanna attract those bees, um, because bees make bigger produce. We've noticed that when we have bees on our property, we get bigger produce, bigger strawberries, bigger blueberries, um, more and more in abundance. So you can attract pollinators by actually spraying um, your plants with um, this spray. The lavender and the orange will attract um, bees. And then here you go, companion plants. If you're like, oh, I don't really wanna try to like puzzle and finagle all the different um, plants, you can um, use essential oils to act like the companion plant. Okay. I have a friend that she actually takes her oils and she'll just kind of drop them on the root of the, you know, around the soil. You can spray them on. You can just drop the oil right around the, um, you know, the soil so that it will act like a companion plant. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, you can see what, um, you know, green beans love and broccoli love and, uh, and try it in your own garden. So like I said, you can spray it or you can just kind of take a drop around the plant. And then um, tending the harvest. This is where late August, September kind of becomes exciting, but then it's like, oh my word, a little bit of drudgery, like trying to fit it all in, especially if you have a big garden, right? You're, you're bringing in so much and you're producing so much. One little seed will produce like so much food right? Just remember that when you have like 10 tomato seed packets in front of you and you're like, how do I choose? Let me plant them all. Well, you're going to be, you're going to be harvesting a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> um, just know that. So you can uh, fill your diffuser with some beautiful scents and just get to work. Clean your uh, produce with Thieves Cleaner. Even though it's organic, there might be bird poop on it. There might be just stuff on it, right? You can soak it into some Thieves Cleaner wash all the residual dirt off, and then chop it up and preserve it if you can it, freeze it, dehydrate it, however you do it, you know it's gonna be clean. And then tackling the outdoors, sometimes that can be a little pesty as well. So here's an outdoor spray that you can spray on yourself. It has thieves, lemon, rosemary, and citronella to help deter any insects. Um, Young Living also has an amazing insect repellent that you can use. I usually just buy that and use it in a little roller bottle. I'll just put, because the insect repellent is like an oil base. So I put it in a roller bottle and I just roll it on behind my ears, ankles, anywhere that I might get bit up, um, wrists. And um, we use that a lot when we're outdoors. Um, and you can actually, it says you can even spray it on your plants as well, just to help them grow and 
repel any insects that might be attacking them. So either you or your plants. And then a little love for the gardener. Okay, sometimes you get some skin irritations. I know every time I pick strawberries or tomatoes, I get all this like prickly skin. Anyone else, like I just get itchy and I just, I hate it. Um, so you can soothe your skin with this soothing stick. Lavender purification and peppermint will soothe the skin. Um, you can put a carrier oil in there, in there as well. Sometimes I just grab lavender and purification and rub it on my hands and then all over my arms and legs where I feel kind of prickly and itchy and it tones it down right away. Um, so gardeners need a little love too. And so why does Young Living matter? Um, seed to seal. So just like we talked about making sure your soil is amended properly, right? Making sure you're choosing good organic soil to start with, to start your seeds with, and it's not from a landfill because labeling can be very deceiving, right? Uh, making sure your neem oil doesn't have hexane in it. Same thing with your essential oils, making sure that there are no chemicals in it. A lot of essential oils, those plants are grown with chemicals. And when you're distilling them, everything in that bottle, even the plant matter is going to have chemical residual in it because it's distilled, right? From that plant that has chemicals on it or toxins or pesticides, herbicides. So making sure that your oils are pure that you're putting on your plants and on yourself. That is why we choose Young Living, Seed to Seal Matters. It means everything is controlled. Um, there are no herbicides, pesticides, chemicals used on the plants or during the distillation process. And so if you have more questions on that, you can let me know. Um, I thank you for joining tonight. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna post a link in the, in the comments. It's a little survey. And if you comment, if you post, I will send you that amazing journal. Um, we have some fun things coming up in March. March, the hope of spring. Um, we have next week, unbox your premium starter kit with us. If you are brand new to Young Living or if you have been around for a while, you can still learn some things. If you want more information on homesteading and, um, and gardening, you can contact myself, you can contact Sarah. If you're, if you're, depends where you're at. If you are brand new and you're in more of a um, community setting, um, suburban setting, small scale farming, small scale homesteading, Sarah can give you tips on that um, from her experience last year in the prior years. If you are going big this year, um, and you're like needing some plans for your homestead, I would love to help you with that. Um, so touch base with either of us and any questions as I pop that um, survey in. I thank you all for joining tonight. It was a lot of information. <laughs> so don't get overwhelmed. Start where you're at and start somewhere, okay? Pick a starting point. Do you have any recommendations on where to get tools from, like garden tools? Um, depends where you're at, but Roar Seeds, they carry tools, um, Agway, Tractor Supply, um, Home Depot, Lowe's, they will all have, especially this time of year, they will have gardening tools. Um, I know even hardware stores will have them as well. Any other questions? That's it. Uh, yeah, and um, the spray, does it kill weeds? You might have to add it a few times. Sometimes I um, white vinegar works too. So you can even put it in with some white vinegar and do like a, but again, making sure that those sprays, just like any, um, you know, herbicide, you just wanna make sure it's not getting on your plant either. I need good places to buy organic plants rather than growing from, from seeds. Um, that's where King's Herb Nook, they will have organic. They do have some organic vegetable plants as well, but it's mostly herbs, but they will have some uh, vegetable plants. Okay. Yay. Well, thank you all for joining. It is nine o'clock, so I don't want to keep you guys any later. I'll post the replay um, and 
Um, anyone that fills out that survey, I'll post you, I'll post a, um, a link to the gardening journal. Have a great night, guys. Thanks for joining. Take care.